What's up, y'all? Thanks for checking in with Callie. So at this point, you know, we have to be, you know, um, understanding and um, we have to kind of, you know, rethink things a little bit. You know, hearing some more news about the Kawhi Leonard and, you know, uh, in regards to his health and things like that, which he's still, you know, not listed as a, a major injury or anything like that. He's still you know, um, just going through his progressions and things like that. As I said before, I just think it's more or less them being overly precautious with Kawhi because, you know, of the recent injury history he's had before, you know, prior to now. And um, but I think, you know, even without Kawhi, the, the Clippers can still be pretty good. They really can. They still could be a pretty damn good team, almost damn near dangerous still, because you still got three star players on there. You still got other guys who contribute in ways where they make up for some of his scoring. You know, you got Norm Powell coming off the bench who can drop 20 plus points any night. You put him out there on the floor or in the starting lineup. And then, you know, you got James Harden. You still got PG. Um Honestly, at this point, James Harden really looks like the second best player on the team to me. I mean, because with his presence since he's come on the team, you know, he really actually gels with Kawhi the most, more so than PG and um, Russell Westbrook. And that's kind of crazy because he's played with both of them, you know, before or at least, you know, he's played with, um, you know, Russell Westbrook before and things like that. So, I mean, but um, even still, like James Harden controls the game. He really does. Of course, he's the point guard and he gets, you know, mostly all the assists and, you know, he could take shots pretty much. He got the green light whenever he wants to. So, I mean, really you know um what they're what they're they're asking for out of him now that you know Kawhi is out a couple of games or something like that James Harden can definitely do that so I mean whether uh, you know it's going to be Paul George or him or whoever but um the main thing is they got to be able to hold it down whoever's in what position they have to hold it down because like I said with this not being a, a um a devastating situation too much you know um they have to be able to, you know, carry their weight a little bit. And with three superstars, three star players on that team, that's good enough to beat a lot of teams in the regular season. Now, we're talking playoffs, seven game series where you're going against a team that's a juggernaut or something like that. Maybe then it's a little bit different, you know, because the magnitude of the games are a lot more different. But I mean, regular season, they still should be fairly dangerous. They still should be a, a very, uh, you know, good team to me, you know, because like I said, they got scoring. They still got defense. And like I said, even without Kawhi Leonard, these few games, you know, however long he's going to be out, you know, they don't have his level of defense and they don't have, you know, his presence on the floor, but they still have guys with a presence on the floor that can go out there and, you know, make things happen, make big shots, you know, um, knock down big shots, you know, play, play very well defensively and, you know, focus on the defensive end like they were and just kind of like, you know, hope that, you know, Kawhi comes back sooner than later because, see, there again, I, I can understand how this, you know, seems and looks because this is another setback for the Clippers. I mean, they were rolling. They were doing good. Kawhi goes down a little bit. But, you know, of course, like I said, he's still listed day to day and um, he still can come back at any time. You know what I'm saying? He has the, like I said, I heard he has practice a little bit with the team, limited practice. And uh, he did a practice after the game, you know, after after one of their practices a few days ago, he came in and practiced by himself, you know, uh, individually. And then he did like a limited practice. So, I mean, he is progressing how he needs to. And, um you know, we have to just kind of like be patient with that and just, you know, keep it rolling. And the Clippers have enough to keep it rolling. That's the reason why they went and got James Harden and, you know, Russell Westbrook and guys like that to kind of make up for just in case there are days and times or a few weeks where, you know, Kawhi and or PG might be out a little bit. You know, they could make up for that time because, you know, they're there to kind of like keep keep everything going until everybody gets back, you know, 100 percent. So, I mean, that's that's the the notion at this point. And um, just the Clippers, have to, they have to go do that. I mean, um, like I said, now I was hearing reports that Kawhi might be back the next game, which is, um, you know, today on uh, Monday. But, you know, it. it it's still questionable up in the air whether he will, but I definitely think that it's a possibility. If not, then we have to, you know, look forward to the next few games and see where he's at, you know, by then, you know, but, um, 
Either way, the Clippers can't make no excuses. You know, they're right there in the fourth seed. Um, they still have an opportunity to keep climbing. They still have an opportunity to at least stay like right where they are, even if they don't climb up to the second spot in the West or something like that. If they can stay kind of like fourth, fifth, you know, um, seed right where they are, that's exactly where they want to be because – like I said, when Kawhi does come back, you know, and he gets in his rhythm, which he, which I know he will, um, they can actually go up a lot higher, and um, you know, keep, and, and stay up there. They, like I said, they fully healthy. They have a chance to take the number one seed. I definitely believe that, and um, it's going to be some tough games, you know, coming up, you know, of course for them, because like I said, their their season is 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 predicated a lot on a lot more road games than home games. So I mean, you know, the Clippers, you know, they're they're gonna, they're going to have to really, you know buckle down and tighten it up and keep it together, you know, because they're going to do a lot of road games and a lot of, you know, um, and their, their, their schedule is brutal this year. As I talked about in the off season, how, you know, their schedule is going to be brutal because of more road games and things like that on their schedule amongst other teams. Then, I mean, like I said, they got to find a way to hold it down and they can do that with what they have. So it's no complaints. It can't be no excuses. You got to go out there and just find a way to win. When Kawhi gets back, he gets back. Now you're fully, geared up healthy ready to go and now you dominate everybody in the league when he comes back that's exactly what the Clippers have to think that's the mindset and that's the way they have to go about it go out here and get wins how you need to it could be ugly it ain't got to be pretty as long as you find a way to get the win because when Kawhi is around of course they can win by 15 20 points because his dominance and the other three stars around him you know a mix with uh the role players they have and you know Ty Lue's brilliance when he decides to use it makes them a dangerous team but I mean right now they're a very very good team you know they're not dangerous because they don't have Kawhi Leonard but I mean very very good could still win you a lot of games so I expect the Clippers to still keep it together and um kind of rally the troops and be uh, turnover free, mistake free as possible, because now you don't have Kawhi there to make up for the mistakes that you that you make up, you know, in regards to turnovers and things like that. Because he makes up for a lot of that because of his defense and what he can do on the other end to disrupt the other team's rhythm and flow. So now that you don't have that, you just got to make less mistakes on the floor. And I know it's easier said than done, but I mean it can be done. So I mean, make less mistakes, give yourself better chances to win without the turnovers as less as possible, and go out there and execute plays at a high level which you can because you got the point guard that you wanted now and James Harden to do that whether one of the one of the one of the top two guys are on the floor or off the floor you still got one of the best point guards in the league technically in James Harden because even though he might not be what he once was scoring wise he's still one of the best point guards in the league because he can average 14 15 assists you know a, a game I mean he did it like last year with the Sixers I mean he averaged like 12 13 assists the whole season damn near so I mean you have somebody that's formidable who can actually still score and give you that type of assist ratio there and you know you, you still have an opportunity to win with somebody like that so with that being said no excuses just find a way to win until Kawhi gets back and then when he gets back you shut the league down by dominating every opponent in front of you and you take it into the playoffs and make the run